All right, so this tutorial is going to go over uh, one of the diagrams that you guys are going to end up ultimately producing for this, but also start to give you guys a sense of the workflow and how you can actually engage in some of the modeling. Um, I've used the scan that I had from a long time ago. Um, the fidelity isn't really as nice as it used to be, uh, or as nice as the scans I gave you guys, um, just because I was learning at the time how to use the scanner. Um, but uh, I think it'll be useful for you guys to go through. And so I'm going to come here and set this view to perspective so that we can sort of pull around in here and I'll just walk you through what I did. So the first thing, uh, I'll reset my camera here. Uh, you see I have the scan here. I actually imported this in pieces, so there's different chunks of this. Uh, I have this layer lock because I was messing with some of the stuff. Um, so I, I tried to delete some of the stuff I didn't need, but I left a lot for you guys to get a sense of what I was doing. Uh, I, I then I contoured it in, in the x direction and then in the y direction to give myself this sort of nice clean grid. Um, I selected out these guys uh, so you guys can see what actual information I used out of this. Um, and I'm, I, the reason I'm showing you guys this is so that you guys can start to get a sense of how you might uh, extract information out and content out when you have to go and diagram and demonstrate what it is that you did. Because uh, this becomes a pretty effective mechanism for um, representation here. Okay, from there. Uh, I took that chunk of information and I moved it over here, and uh, this is where I started doing cleanup. And this is where some, really some a lot of the mesh issues that I created by not building this as one complete thing are generated. So your guys' stuff will look a lot cleaner than this, um, but that's okay. Because then what I did is I went through, I ran the intersect command, I extracted points, and then I rebuilt curves that were um, functions of that. And then out of that, I was able to rebuild a sort of nice clean set of curves which enabled me to create some lofts. Now at first when I did this um, because of the type of curves everything had to be a straight section. I looked at this, this is if I shade this, not the best set of geometries for mapping so I decided to go back and continue to clean this up uh, which led me to rebuild the curves and so that each curve has the same number of control points and then I did. So I turned it from one degree to three degree curves, so this had gave me some nice smooth geometries in here. Uh, and then I did a straight section loft. I don't know, you can see, tell that it's already much cleaner than its uh, predecessor. And then I did a typical loft. Okay. Now from there, this is where I did a little bit of. I'll just hide this out. I rebuilt this surface, uh, but I didn't necessarily need to because I, what I ended up doing is I built a grasshopper definition. Uh, that I use to tile this. So I this is for 3D printing. You guys are obviously going to be building a garment, um, but in lieu of going through all this, I thought I'd sort of just show you what I did. And so to model the the actual component here, I took this guy. I, I'll just hide this out. So I drew literally one curve section here. Then I scaled it down and mirrored it along the sides. And then I scaled it down, moved it over a little bit more, rotated it down, so I had this nice sort of flat panel. And then I created this nice loft out of that. And so it has this really sort of intricate level of detail. You can tell it's so intricate it's making my computer run slowly, but that's okay. Uh, from there, I needed, uh, I knew that I was going to be tiling this, and so I needed that the tiles, um, because of that, if I come over here and look at this, uh, this has a pretty sharp lip, uh, and so that won't 3D print all that well. Uh, and so I gave this a base by just extruding the edges here. I did an extract wireframe. So and this is a technique you guys will see. If I scroll down on the properties, I can turn off the, the visible isoparms. And you see now it just shows that one purple edge. And then I can extract the wireframe. Uh, from there, that gives you a set of curves that I then extruded down. Uh, and now, because of the nature of this set of geometries, and it's going to auto save, if we look at this in elevation, because it's a loft, the edges are not completely smooth and level so you can see that this guy sit tapers down and up so it's not really even um, but I just need a base to mount this onto to give it an edge and so I just put another plane on there and I use the plane to trim that out uh, and then I split it out okay then I started up grasshopper and if I pull this up I just wrote a really quick definition uh, so we could have this going here um, I use a reference box and I use a brep, and if I just hide this, you'll be able to see the brep. So, I, so that's the reference box, this green guy right here. Uh, and then this is the actual object that I want to sort of transform and map onto the surface. So then I took a surface, which was my arm piece, 
and I'll scroll over in a second. Uh, and then I set the height that I wanted each one of these tiles to alternately be at, and then I set the U and V divisions for my component. Uh, so how many times do I want it moving across X and how many times do I want it moving across Y? Um, from there, what I did is I divided the surface, my base surface, by that U and V coordinate system uh, and gave it a height of this. So I gave these sort of transformation box. And then I took the reference box and also created a set of coordinates to reference. And so the actual geometry is transformed by taking the eight reference points that coordinate with this box and deforming them into the new reference points that are uh, associated with this surface. So if I, I'll just turn off the preview for this. And hopefully this will run smoothly. If I zoom out over here, you'll be able to see what I mean. Okay, and so I'll just select some of these guys out, hide part of them. So here's what you can see what this is doing. And so here we have our, if we select this, these are our transformation boxes. And you can see as this thing, uh, we're moving along, each one of these guys has been mapped into that box. And where that overlap was, um, where it extended outside of the bounding box area, uh, the tile or now extends outside of that. So that gives me this sort of nice, interesting uh, edge that if I wanted to invest more time into it, I could develop that. Um, but then, so here, and I'll just come over here now, and I'll just hide the rest of these. And so then what ends up happening is, if we just preview that, you can see that these guys are, are in here. Now this is a parametric model, so I can come over here and say I want one more. And this may take a minute to process, but that's okay. Now it's thinking. All right, and you can see that that updated on the surface there, that little blip. Uh, so now we have more tiles in here. Okay, and so that from here, what we can do is we could uh, choose to bake that out. And we'll just, yeah, hit OK. And then we'll close this out because this is really, um, it takes a lot of processing power because I'm doing pretty significant um, transformation here. Go ahead and close that down. So I have the the thing I did before, the thing I just baked out, and I'll just move that over ten. Oop. You can see that there's now a few more components in here, so it's slightly different, but uh, essentially prototypically the same. So um, we lose the little details over here where we had some crossover. Um, because we're using more subdivisions, it's blending a little bit better. So we can create this sort of nice uh, armor here out of this. And so this was the idea here is to give this sort of a sense of scale um, or scales moving across this. All right, uh, and so that's how that essentially is going to get you set up if you were to use Grasshopper to do this. Um, and then what we're going to look at here now is um, actually adjusting and setting up for some of the diagramming modes here. Okay. Uh, this is the steps that I'd like to see you guys actually when we start to talk about process. How did you arrive at your final geometry? You could literally take this step by step by step by step, uh, similar to what we did in SketchUp, and uh, just explicitly talk about each one of those actions, and that would be a functional diagram uh, for what we need.